Hello, today we're going to be jumping into the top 10 base locations for PvP players. Now keep in mind, while some of these spots on Scorched Earth are going to be showing you may be strong now, that's because of the limited type of dinos that can be on the map currently. Once server is open, of course, the, some of these spots will get even weaker. And, of course, uh, once server is open, the center is technically dropping. So you may just be pulling all your stuff off of Scorched Earth anyway, hiding in your island base while you go play on center. Uh, so just if you have a good island base, that is. And then, of course, once you can move stuff to center, all your stuff will probably move to center since that has better base locations than island and scorch. But let's jump into this. All right, for our number 10 spot, we have this bridge on scorched earth near the Wyvern Trench. Now, some of the weaknesses of this bridge is golems uh, and hair racers and other things like that can walk right up to it. But the good news is it's a bridge. It's narrow. It limits how much can come at you at once. Uh, it gives you options for fighting, uh, for pushing people off the side, and it limits the direction players can attack you from. Now, of course, with the Oasisaur, any base on land is going to be weak due to the Oasisaur ability to LS your turrets with its dead body. So keep that in mind as well. But with this spot, you can get a decently sized base out here on this bridge, covered in turrets, powered with wind turbines and tech generators. And you can ultimately hold this bridge against a larger tribe for quite a while. Coming in at number 9 are the Twin Peaks near the Red Obelisk. Right, these are right on the other side of the Wyvern Rift, which is kind of a weakness because the enemy players can grab Wyvern Eggs, drag a bunch of Wyverns up in your base, and have the Wyverns kill your dinos. A couple of Rock Golems will pretty much put an end to that. This location is nice due to that it's really hard to walk any dinosaurs up here. So enemies would need to get kind of close uh, and to put down uh, their fob and growl fridges to get to you. That said, there are still a few paths that enemies can walk up to your base. So make sure you bolster those sides really well if you do build up on these Twin Peaks. And of course, since this is a core start and there's very few flyers in the game and very few of the flyers that can bring anything up to tank your base, getting up high is a great way to be as long as you can win the aerial battles. Right, coming in at number 8 is out in the desert dunes, any of the four corners really. As you can see, we have the shield walls that go up into the corners here. You build from here, out that direction, two of your sides that can be attacked from are protected. You only have to protect now from three directions, aerial, left, and right. So that lets you put it, take your 100 turrets and point them all in the directions enemies are going to be coming from rather than having to put 25 on each side trying to protect your base. And of course, you can expand out in the arc in front of your base with turret towers and turret towers and turret towers. However many layers of turret towers you want out as far as you want, as far as you can afford to do it. Uh, this is where a lot of mega tribes will build just for that reason. And yes, golems can get to this spot, and so can paracers and stuff, but golems are countered pretty easily by deck turrets. So that's less of an issue. If you're building out here, you're probably in a larger tribe that can get tech turrets going pretty quickly. One of the issues out here are death worms can pop up onto your base sometimes, which is uh, unfortunate, but it can happen. Coming into number seven is this center pillar here, in between the red obby and the green obby. Just kind of give you a view of the area here. You can see the little fingers sticking up over there, the rocks there. And this is the pillars near there. These are not the best pillars to build on, but if they're available, if they're all that's available, go for it. It's a pretty decent spot for a smaller tribe. Uh, it's got some LOS issues you'll need to take care of. And of course, people can try and build in Fortnite up to you, depending on uh, what you have blocked off here. But you can get a pretty decently sized base here and defend it pretty well, uh, especially since, like I said, until Scorched Earth opens up, there's not a whole lot of aerial threats on Scorched Earth. Uh, of course, someone can bring golems and air racers and stuff on top of their racer and fly it over here. Uh, but you can counter that with wyverns if you know it's coming. All right, then near Green Obby, we have another central pillar that is a little bit better and rolls in at number six. You can get a decently sized base on this pillar if you'd like, and if you just want to, you can build on this just top pillar, a smallish base, and you'll be able to protect it fairly well. And then, of course, you can get more breeding base. You can get a breeding base or whatever down there on the middle pillar. Uh, turret range would be an issue trying to cover this whole pillar, uh, but if you focus on the top pillar with your turrets and defenses, you should be able to hold this uh, indefinitely until Scorched Earth opens up. As long as you're always online, of course. 
Coming in at number 5 is a pillar near Green Obby, kind of between green and blue, near the dunes, and underneath it is a bunch of metal and oil nodes, uh, so it's a really nice place to get go down and get your metal quick and come back up. You can get a decently sized base here, and you can protect it fairly well. This location does have some LOS issues, but not nearly as bad as some of the other pillars. And if you notice, there's only one other pillar kind of up close. You have this place down kind of in the middle there where someone could try and maybe Fortnite up. But you can easily stop that. And until Quetzals are on the server, these pillar bases will make decent bases for any tribes that can't get into the caves. Then we have the Wyvern Trench Cave. This cave has a smallest entrance, allowing you to choke the enemy into a smaller fight, allowing a smaller tribe to potentially hold off a larger tribe. On top of that, you have this pool of lava here you can kick your enemy dinos into and trap them, especially if you built anything on the other side to keep the dinos from getting out of it, and just trap them in this lava pool and kill the dinos. Then as you come around out of there, you get another nice choke point. You can put some turrets back there, and then it opens up into a fairly large cave where you can breed a bunch of dinosaurs and store a whole lot of stuff. And again, we still have near the entrance more lava and lava pools, and a nice little cliff place where you can kick some dinosaurs off and really uh, get them killed down there. So you have some pretty decent defense options in here if you're online. Offline, this base is not in a great position to survive though. If you want to know anything more about the caves that we're showing in this video, there's a full playlist with all these scorched earth caves in it. And the island caves as well, giving them PvP ratings and kind of talking about where you could set up defenses at. And kind of how the cave might work. Then we have the Blue Obby Cave, and this one's pretty close to about the same strength as that uh, as the Wyvern Cave. That might be just slightly better. So we'll head down into the Blue Obby Cave, or the Crack Cave, whatever you want to call it. And as you notice, the entrance is not too big. And then as we come around, we go through an even smaller entrance. So a nice little choke point here, where we can set up some nice turrets on the other side and build a decent defense here. And as you go through this cave, it's not... Super great because there's lots of splits, uh, but there are a couple of places where you can build several layers of defenses all the way back to the final section of the cave where the crag artifact is, allowing a small tribe to hold this. This would be better than having a pillar base, and but not quite as good as having some of the other caves that are on the map. All right, and for the next cave, which if you don't know, this cave is pretty funny since uh, when I found out about these scorched earth release being on April 1st, I was like, oh yeah, April Fools, they're not going to do that, right? So I made an April Fools video right away. And I dove into the spot, and then I cut and went into a cave on the island ASA <laughs> to make a fake cave. But, uh, but yeah, so and then they ended up actually putting a cave here. Uh, so that was kind of a fun little prediction. But yeah, so we're next to the Red Obby. This is the Oasis Cave. And so the Oasis Cave is one of the stronger caves on the map. But once server is open, it won't be quite as strong. One of the things that makes it so strong right now is this choke point right here, as we're seeing. As you come down in here, this choke point has a is kind of small, and only certain dinos can get through it, like stagos and things like that. But there aren't really any small soakers on Scorch right now, and it's kind of hard to get a land dino this far underwater, unless you can destroy enough structures to get to release crowd pods nearby. For now, until Scorched Earth opens, there's really not a whole lot of options for raiding this location uh, as long as you have that choke point blocked off. And then after that choke point, you have this nice little choke point here, which is a uh, which is a nice narrow little cross space kind of place where only smallish uh, tank dinos can get through again as well. Uh, the only issue with this is you can drive a boat right through here for quite a ways, and if you don't know, motor boats allow you to build out really far in front of them. Uh, so even if the boat can't get all the way here, you can get a hallway pushed out in front of the motor bo boat far enough or pretty much will let you mess up a lot of defenses that are through here and even potentially even let you drop down into the cave below this waterfall here. So yeah, you'd be able to get to almost this waterfall before you would even have to be shot by terror so you can potentially run out and jump down there. Um, there's several other ways you can use a boat to mess this up. So that's why this cave is not quite as strong. And then, uh, but getting to the point where you can put a boat in here would take some time and some work, and without water tames or without, uh, smaller soakers, this cave is pretty much secure. Well, that's kind of interesting, though. You have the weather effects in this cave as well. <laughs> this cave can be really nice. It has a lot of resources in it. You can sustain your tribe in here for a while, at least for breeding. 
Uh, you can get all kinds of berries in here, farm in here. There should also be cave dinos in here you can kill to get meat from. Uh, but you probably would get more meat from the surface. But it's a huge, huge area. You can build all kinds of neat little bases in here. Uh, but once you're past those two choke points, it opens up and it becomes really hard to build any, like... And it becomes really hard to layer defenses around every... Uh, you just kind of have to put defenses around everywhere and hope that it works. Uh, they can potentially avoid it. Uh, you're limited to how many generators and turrets you can get into an area. So they were probably the most likely areas that even once you have all your defenses up, people can still skirt past them and uh, avoid getting shot. Then we have the church cave, and this cave comes in pretty close to the central cave. They're almost as they are both almost as good as each other. So if you whichever cave you can get, if you can get one of these right off the bat, grab it. The church cave has the potential to build decent outside defenses if you would like. It's still in six times damage, usually pretty close to it. But you could expand out as well, kind of like in the dunes. But of course, you have to protect it from all five directions, you know, all four sides and up. So keep that in mind when building an outside base, it'll limit how many turrets you can actually uh, have firing at once. As we move through the church cave, the original opening of the church cave is much larger than it was before, reducing the effectiveness of being able to defend this main entrance. But as you move down further into the cave, you get quite a few different choke points you can use to build up defenses. And you can layer defenses like three, maybe even four or five. Uh, layers of defenses all the way back until you're all the way back into the artifact room. Making this cave fairly decent and allowing a small tribe to hold this cave against a larger force if need be. And coming in number one, simply due to the Oasis Cave's weakness being when the server is open, this would technically probably be number two and the Oasis Cave would be number one until the uh, server is open, but once they open, that's what the rating is for. This cave entrance is really nice. It's a nice choke point. You can't get any big soakers through here. Not even sure a stego fits. It didn't fit in Survival Evolved. Might fit now, but it doesn't look like it would. The great thing is, even if a stego or a track does fit through here, you can get tech turrets up on the other side that will pop the drivers off, making this cave really nice. You have this nice choke point where you can get a bunch of turrets, and then you can get turrets up in here, up high, that shoot down. And of course, once enemies in through that choke point, they can get it, they can get in here and they start uncrowning things. They can get bigger tanks going throughout the cave. Uh, but you can layer several different defenses throughout the cave, uh, making this a really strong cave. And of course, one of the best areas to hold an enemy off is right along this bridge here, where it circles back around and comes down and goes through another choke point. Uh, you can get a bunch of turrets off to the right here. And you can hold this with a couple of people against the larger group for quite a while. And of course, once they make it past that, then they have to get through this choke point here, which comes out to the right into a big open area where you can put a bunch of turrets and really destroy anybody who's trying to pass through here. And with the crowd pod nerf, this becomes a really nice, uh, strong, defendable cave. Let us know in the comments what was your favorite base location. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.